All right, so let's get to the fact that uh, she was basically abducted. This lady keeps her confined in, in a bed. She's gone for several days. We don't know exactly how long it is. Um, but here's the thing that really threw me off and did not quite make sense. The father goes and finds this guy, this private detective, he says, look, I need you to find this Greta character. I have a little folder here, but this is all I know about her. Um, please, you know, tr try to find this lady. Now, did that not strike you as odd? Now, you knew when the, when the, when the dad talks to the roommate and they realize that she's missing, you just knew they're both going to run to the police. Because the police already had a couple of reports on file about this lady. But no, they don't run to the police. They go to a private detective who knows nothing about the situation and has them a folder, says, look, we need you to find this lady. And they make it seem like this lady had just like dropped off the face of the earth. There's like no records of her. Uh, we have no way of reaching this lady, finding out who she is or where she is or where she lives or anything like that. I've got to hire a private detective for all that. Now that made absolutely no sense to me. This lady was totally, totally findable, literally, probably within hours, right? And I'll tell you why. Now, I'm going to give you five ways they could, that they could have tracked this lady down within hours, not days like they was looking around as, as it turned out. But I'm going to give you five ways they could have tracked this lady down. Okay, first of all, uh, Francis filed the police report, you know, had tried to get the restraining order and everything. Uh, and, and, you know, when she was standing outside there for a long time, uh, uh, and she, you know, gave the, the officer the name and everything. Now, uh, to be honest, no, it did not look like the guy, the black officer, you know, went over and interviewed her and took her name and ID and everything because his attitude was more like, oh, she has a right to be there. I have no uh, cause to to uh, stop her and ask her questions, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I do agree that uh, he did not necessarily have to approach her and look at her ID and take down her name and address and all that kind of stuff. But when Francis filed her report, you have to know, you have to believe that, you say, okay, do you know the name of this lady? Yeah, I know the name of the lady. I'll give you the full name of the lady and I'll tell you exactly where she lives. I, I, put, put this in your report. You have to believe that Frances, in filing her, rep, her report, gave the police everything that she knew about the person. You know, the name, the address, because she had been there. So that, that first police report should have had all that information on it. Okay, that's point number one. Point number two, when uh, Greta made the scene uh, at the restaurant, ended up having to, you know, be carried out. The police was involved. That same officer, that same black officer was there. All right. They put on a, on a stretcher, put an ambulance. Now, you know that there was some type of police report filed again and they got her, all of her ID information she got on the ambulance you know that the ambulance took a ton of information about this lady her name, insurance, her address and all that stuff anybody who's ever taken the ambulance knows that those people don't play they take a ton of information they're going to send you a bill literally for months so they have a, a whole heap of information on you. That's for one. And, and those records are readily retrievable, let's face it, by the police. And the ambulance took this lady, obviously, to a hospital. And at the hospital, they take information too, the name, 
address, and everything like that. At the hospital, they don't play either. They take a ton of information, the name, address, all that stuff. So all that information was readily retrievable from the ambulance people, the hospital people, all that was readily retrievable. And if they had gone to that black officer and said, look, we're trying to find this lady, the officer would know that all this information is readily available. He did, didn't even have to go to the ambulance or the hospital. He, he had his own police reports. So that was readily available. Okay, point number three. Greta was texting these people like nonstop for days. And from just one text, didn't even, she was texting probably a hundred times. Even from one text, they have the, her phone number in the cell phones. They could track her cell phone records to find out who's a, who has a cell phone number and track the cell phone number back to, to her house, literally within hours. Now you're gonna say, oh no, but hold on. Greta had Francis's cell phone, so they didn't ha even have his cell phone. No, because Greta, they said this, Greta was texting her friend as well. Her friend was getting texts, so they could have used the text that Greta sent to, to her roommate to track this lady down easily. That's point number three. Uh, point number four, this lady has Francis' cell phone. The cell phone is on and she's still sending texts. They can track the cell towers and the pings and all this type of stuff and find her live cell phone actively. They do it all the time to see where the pinging is coming from and narrow it down to a uh, you know, local area, you probably do that with a lot of precision. Now you're going to say, oh no, but Greta is smart. She probably turned the phone off and she may have even taken out the bat battery. No, Greta didn't, didn't do any of that. Let's face it, this lady had a cell phone from 1995 and she didn't even barely even know how to operate it. I'm actually pretty shocked that she was sending out all these texts in rapid fire because anyone who's ever had one of them flip phones know that to send any kind of text is a big deal. You gotta scroll through three letters on every number on the number pad to just to get one letter. It's a pain in the butt. And the idea of her sending 80, them, 80 or more of them texts is unbelievable. At any rate, this lady was not text savvy at all. They made that very clear the idea that she would know that they can track a cell phone and there's such a thing as find your phone on the cell towers and pings. This lady would not know what the hell a, a ping was to save a life. No, she didn't have the, the wherewithal to turn the phone off and take the battery out. There's a lot of people right in 2019 who, had, who have cell phones who wouldn't even understand all that. At any rate, Greta's not going to do that. She's going to keep the cell phone on until it runs out of batteries, rummaging through Francis's personal business and her personal photos and text messages and contacts, because that's basically the way Greta is, let's face it. You know that's what she was doing. She's, she's not going to turn that. She wants to hear who's texting her and calling her. So yeah, she's going to have that cell phone on until the battery runs out. Now, mind you, she didn't have a charger. There's no way she had a charger, but there's no way she turned that phone off, okay? So that's method number four. <clears throat> okay, fifth method. Like I said, they had a ton of ways to find this girl. The fifth method is that uh, on Francis's cell phone, they can see where she was at least attempting to call Nicole because they exchanged, they had played like phone tag a few times. She had spoken to her on the telephone or spoke to someone by telephone and met the, the lady at the cafe. So they can track down her talking to Alexa Hammond, that's Nicole's partner. They can track her, they can track that telephone number down to, to basically reach up with Alexa and say, oh yeah, did you, had, why, was they, why was you calling her? Oh, so she reached out to me because she was trying to reach Nicole and I actually met with her because um, she had some questions about Greta. 
Now, this girl, Alexa, the Nicole's partner, she knew everything about Greta. She knew her backstory, where she was from, her full name, blah, blah, blah. She had a whole ton of information. She certainly could have provided enough information that they could track this lady down. So there you go, five ways they could have found Francis. So the idea that she was missing and Noah couldn't find her for several days, to me, just really makes sense. Why, uh, you know, her roommate nor the dad went to the police doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get that at all. Okay, so finally uh, they got the, the detective. He gets there. And um, maybe that's why they didn't contact the police. Because if this had been the black officer uh, going to the house, he wouldn't have been as casual as this private detective was. He was very sloppy. Now you're going to say, oh no, he wasn't sloppy. Remember now, he was looking through windows. He was walking up to the roof. No, but look, the guy walks in there. As soon as he talks to this lady, he knows he's talking to the right lady. He's seen the picture. That little file folder had a picture on it. So he knows he's talking to the lady. And he knows that Francis is missing. So immediately his guard should have been up. He should have had his hand right near the holster. He's packing a gun. We don't even realize that till he's nearly on the floor. At any rate, he's walking there all casual. I mean, when she invited him in, did, did you not think to yourself, oh boy, here we go, he's gonna sit down, she's gonna offer him coffee, he's gonna drink the coffee, and the coffee spiked with the drug, and he's gonna be gone, because this guy is acting really kind of stupid. I mean, you kind of figured it was going that direction, right? At any rate, it, it almost ended very similar to that, because the guy had his guard down, very sloppy, very, you know, undiligent, back turned to this lady in this lady's house, not paying attention to where she is, and pulls out his gun really at the last moment. He's nearly, he, that's not, that should have been like the first thing on his mind. He, w he would have had full justification to shoot this lady in the head. Let's face it, she's drugged. He realizes there's a secret door. She, he got stabbed in the neck by this lady. He's worried about her cutting his head off when he's out knocked out cold so he would have had full justification to shoot this lady in the head no he waits he's i don't even know why he's delaying oh finally he takes out his gun he's nearly on the floor by this time and gets off some shots that don't hit this lady so this guy was very stupid maybe that's why they had him searching around rather than a bona fide officer because you know the officer wouldn't be slinking around all casual oh sure I'll sit down for coffee no they'd be all about business they'd be looking around casing the joint looking for suspicious uh, you know activities suspicious noises you know taking mental notes and all this kind of stuff so that kind of bothered me you have just watched part two of a three-part series Check the description box for links to part one and the conclusion of this presentation in part three. Thank you.